Hey guys, this is Sapphire Yagami, and I know I'm sort of behind on this review, but I had to buy a power cord, my, and I think I have to buy a new mic, because um, I was going through my videos, and some of them started to sound distorted, so I don't know if it's a mic, or maybe it's my computer altogether. Anyway, I'm not to use what I got right now, I said I'm more all over at my job, because working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is not enough for me. Anyway. This is a recap of the second episode of Season 3 of Team Wolf. Um, this episode is titled Chaos Rising. It starts off with Lydia tracing the line with the pin on the boot that the girl gave her, the girl from the first episode, the black chick. Um, she holds it up to the identical mark on Allison's arm and says that she sees that she fails to see a pattern. They are driving to find Scott because Allison believes he might know what the symbol means. Styles has talked Scott into attending his childhood friend's Heather's 17th birthday party. Scott really doesn't want to go because he because he, he, he feels that it's weird to go to a different high school party, you know. Styles tells him that he went to nursery school with Heather and that she promised to introduce the pair to all of her friends. Styles thinks this would be an excellent opportunity for Scott and him to move on from Allison and Lydia, even though him even though Styles and Lydia was never necessarily together, but okay, you know. Um Scott looks at his phone and knows he hasn't been called from Allison. Um, then they go inside the house. Um, inside the party, we have um, Heather and her friend Danielle. They're toasting. And so her brother's like, yeah, she's that thing. Heather says she plans on having sex for the first time. And her friend Daniel tells her that uh, your first time is sort of gross and it kind of hurts. And Heather says that when she falls in love eventually, she wants to be good at it. I don't know about losing it at a, your birthday party, though. You know what I'm saying? Because they always say you remember your first time. And I have met many of my friends have said they, they wish they would have waited till they got married. Because now they're because now they're happy with the guy they're with, you know. A lot of girls end up saying, you know, they wish they would have waited. But, you know, you kind of can't turn back hands of time, you know. You know it's just something serious, you know. It's a, it's a large step in your life, you know. Graduating from high school is, is a big step in your life because now you're considered adult. Losing your virginity is a big step in your life. Getting married, having kids, those are all big milestones in in, the, in this thing you call the circle of life, okay? Just think about these things. Okay? Can't take it back. Anyway, um, the boys and, uh, and um, Heather leap set Styles kissing him deep and kissing him and asking him to come down to the basement her to get some wine. Styles like, hey, okay, this is a hey. So Scott sees this and he's just like, "What? This is the kind of party? Is? Cause I'm serious. Because seriously, if you're a guy and you just walk into the party and your best friend you decide to buy a chick, he Scott's face was just hilarious. He's like, "What? This, this? I like this kind of party." So he looks at her friend Danielle and she gives him that up and down look like, as if you can handle all of this. And she just walks away. I'm like, "Dang, <laughs> it's like that." Dang. But it was hilarious though. He, he was like, "So uh, it's funny." But anyway, she goes down to the basement with um Styles, and she tells him that she wants to lose her virginity, and he's like, "Wait, what? Oh, okay." And she goes and asks him if he's if if he's ever done it before. And come on, guys, you know it's Styles. He has not done it before, so it's his first time too. So they're going. So she's like, "Cool, we get to lose our virginities together." I'm like, "Okay." But like, then he stops it because, well, he doesn't have condoms. So she says, my brother has some condoms upstairs in the bathroom. My thing is, why would you send him to the condoms? I mean, it's your house. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying. So Scott goes up, Styles goes up, um, goes, you know, find the condoms. But the problem is, <laughs> they're extra large size. So he did look down at his crotch. And I'm guessing he's not that big, <laughs> due to the fact that he's like, oh crap, you know. And I mean, the condo has to fit, you know. And so, meanwhile, we have Scott, who goes outside, and they show him the bruises. I'm like, great way to ruin a party, you know, he's trying to have fun, here you guys come with wolf business. Anyway. So, Miss Heather is downstairs by herself, when all of a sudden, the, the wine racks start to shake. Then bottles start literally flying off the freaking rags, breaking, and she's like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And she has no shoes on, so you know, so with the glass breaking, she's stepping on glass, she's bleeding. My thing is, go up the stairs. <laughs> I hate when people do that in movies. 
or TV shows, like, they just stand there and scream. I'm like, go upstairs. Oh, my God, because people are not going to hear her scream because it's a party upstairs. It's just, it's just a lot of me. I'm like, oh, my God, please stop. So she um, ends up backing herself into the wall when the window slowly opens and something grabs her out the window. I'm like, really? Really? Styles comes back, he finds Heather gone, but when he gets down there, he don't see no wine glass, no wine on the floor, no broken glass, or no blood. All he sees is her shoe. So um, next we go over to um, Isaac, who says that Scott doesn't trust Peter and that, uh, oh no, he says um, he doesn't like the idea, he doesn't like Peter, but they're saying that he doesn't know how to do it, so they have to get Peter. And he goes and saying that Scott doesn't trust Peter and that he is, that he, Isaac, trusts Scott. Derek wants to know if he has I I trust him. He says yes, but he doesn't he does like Peter. And Derek like nobody likes Peter. Hey, you can't help it. He has he has some issues in life, but you can't help it. Peter in comes in and says, um, um, he you know, due to the fact that uh um that he has been dead for a while and he has come back, his ability is somewhat apparent, but his hearing still works. And he said, if you have something to say, say it's okay. And Derek's like, we don't like it. So then, it's, um, Derek, he, I mean, Peter then explains the, um, that the claw to the neck thing is an ancient ritual used mainly by alphas. Since it's a skill that requires quite a bit of practice. He says, one slip could paralyze somebody or kiss one week. And he then, um, called, and the reason he said it, because the way he, as he's talking about the, you know, the spinal cord, the spine area. Everybody knows that if you damage that area, that's pretty much, you're, you're messed up. There's, there's no getting back from that. You mess up that area, mm-mm. you could be paralyzed from the waist down. It, it, it's serious business. It's, it's, that's, something, that's something you don't play with. Serious. Anyway. Um, so he plunges his claws into his neck. Me, I'm like, ow. And his eyes turn blue. And does, he does like this, um, he starts... I guess like a mind thing, kind of like um, if you if you're a Star Trek fan, kind of like what um, Volt, um, um, Spock does, something like that, similar like that. And so he he starts seeing a um, series of blurry images. One is boy, another is Du 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 Du, du Colin. I can't pronounce these freaking names. I'm just calling D. Um, Peter then explains that Isaac did find them, and he saw a bear glitches of them and heard them talking about what time running out. D apparently wants, apparently promises that they will both be dead by the full moon tomorrow night. Um, then we go off to um, the high school. We have Scott um, um, makes Derek look at the matching bruises on Alice and Lydia, and Derek says it's nothing. Lydia says, Lydia says it's paradoia, a mental condition that causes people to see patterns that aren't there. Um, Scott says the girl's trying to help, and Derek both this point at to Lydia saying, "This one, you, this one, you who used me to resurrect my psychotic uncle." Thank you. He goes to Alice and this is the one who shot me about who <laughs> shot thirty arrows into me in my pack. Scott points out that body have been mangled and maimed. There was no death associated with all that, and this Lydia and Allison were involved in last season. Um, Allison points out that her mother died, and Derek said that her death was due to the Arginate family honor code and not his actions. Mm. But it's true. Go back and see the episode, party guest. Um, Allison says that she's dead helps um, um, Scott, not you. And um, Scott pretty much takes Derek and sounds like, dude, look, they're trying to help us, okay? Because uh, Allison has no idea what her parents was really doing. She's pretty much in the dark about that. And Derek says then maybe Scott should probably tell her what her mother was trying to do the night he bit her. Um, later, the near the Lafayette, Styles is trying to figure out what the Apple Pack wants with Derek and Boyd. Erica and Boy. Scott says he's not sure the Alphas want them. Styles then speculated that he may be trying to recruit Derek because Derek is an Alpha. Um, that moment, um, the Alpha twins, Ethan and Aiden, pass by, and Scott senses that something's wrong with them and kind of watches them, but he didn't say what caught his attention because you know he's a wolf. I'm pretty sure he's gonna sense an Alpha because I uh, think Scott is a Beta, which is on like second in command to Alpha. I'm pretty sure he's gonna sense them, but Miss uh. Lydia's trying to hump them. Like, if you're trying to get away from wolf, wolf stuff, stay out of it. Anyway, in the day in class, um, it's business class. Is on the action by the stock market. 
So um, he says, um, Coach asks, the stock market is based on what two principles? Scott raises his hand, the teacher like, you don't know the answer. And Scott says um, the answer, and he says it's risk and war. And the, Scott, the coach is like, oh my God, what have you done with Scott? He's like, never mind, I like it. Stay, stay the new Scott, I like it, I like it. Um, then um, he asks for a quarter, and Styles goes to take out a quarter, only to take out the extra large condom, and it pops on the floor. And the coach then picks it up and says, congratulations. I'm like, really? That's like so embarrassing. Anyway, he then uses a quarter to use um use an old drink again to explain the risk and reward principle, and then he says if you take the risk and successfully land the quarter in a cup, you won't have to take a pop quiz. Danny points out that it's not pop quiz and they already know about it. Coach challenges Scott to put the quarter in a mug. If he fails, he will have to take the quiz and write an essay. If he succeeds, there will be no extra work. And he then explains that there is a third option not to play at all. Coach then explains that everything Scott knows about himself, his abilities, and his past experiences should inform him, should inform his decisions and determine if the risk is worth it. Scott chooses not to play at all. Um, Styles is about to take his turn when his dad shows him and tells him that Heather has been missing since Styles saw her last. He assumed that when he couldn't find her, that she's simply gone off with friends. Allison is still trying to work out the meaning of the symbol, drawing it with her free hand on a piece of paper while looking up ancient symbols on the internet on her Apple laptop computer. The Alpha Twins in the library, and Allison's like, which one? Delia explains that she wants the straight one, obviously. I'm like, oh dang, really? One point is straight, one other one is gay. Because the other one ends up going, and uh, <laughs> the other twin goes to start flirt with Danny. Everybody knows Danny is, you know, gay. I was like, wow, really? That's interesting, that's, that's definitely interesting. Never had that moment before. Um, Allison then picks up her, her coffee cup and notices that the logo on the uh, on the coffee cup, and she thinks that most likely that this symbol on the is most likely is not a uh, a symbol, but you know a logo. Um, Sky speculated that Alphabet may be behind Heather's disappearance, but they can't come up with a convincing reason why they want to do that. Styles is kind of freaking out because they, you know, they pretty much grew up together, took the best baths together, so he has to find her. Um, Sky said they need Isaac to remember the side of Peter and Derek failed to find. They said um, if Peter and Derek failed, then they're going to have to go ask Dr. Beaton. Dr. Beaton's a black, you know, veterinarian. Um, they go to the animal clinic, they're putting large things of ice in a metal bathtub, and Dr. Dean said they're gonna have to put him gonna have to lower his temper so lower his temperature so his heart rate and pretty much slip him into a trance. So I'm like, what? And says um Dean also said that um Isaac will be half transformed and this will um allow them to access his subconscious mind. It will slow his heart rate till, they're near, till he is nearly there until they get the results of need. But they put him in a the tub, they have to hold him under because, you know, it's freaking cold, you know? And so then he goes in the trance and he finds, um, um, remember finding board at the Beacon Hills First National Bank bank in the boat, and he says he's also found Erica's dead body. Derek refuses to believe that, um, Erica is dead, so they would wonder who's in the boat with Boyd. Scott suggests it might be, be, be the mysterious girl that saved Isaac in the last episode, but Isaac says, says no, that's, she wasn't like us, and whoever was in the boat with Boyd was. Um, Scott speculated that Alpha are putting the prisoners against each other during full moon like a World War Thunderdome. Um, then we have Addison going out to the, um, uh, the, uh, the bank by herself, which is stupid. I'm like, you know, if you're trying to stay out of the wolf stuff, don't go there by yourself. Anyway, it's five o'clock at the loft with um, Styles, Derek, Scott, and Peter trying to figure out a plan. You know, they're looking at, you know, um, blueprints of the bank. They eventually figure out that they're gonna have to get in through the ducts. Styles, like, you, you're gonna have to use some sort of drill because, you know, it's three inches. They try to punch through that, so he ends up punching Styles' hand, almost breaking it. He's a wolf. I'm pretty sure he can break through that. Mm.
So we have Scott and um, Derek go to the um, um, go to the bank, only find um, find um, um, Boyd and his sister, his his younger sister. They realize um, when they got the call from um, Styles and Peter that the walls of the bank is made of a mineral called mo or hectolite or moonstone, and has been block blocking the natural moonlight from reaching, you know, Boyd and um, his sister. And so they pretty much, without them be able to transform for four months, they're, they're, they're tense. Kind of like if they compared to the Roman God game, they would starve the lions. So that when they put the lines out in the games, those lines would literally tell those gladiators apart because they're freaking hungry. You know, if you if you go about something for a while, you'll be freaking hungry. Same thing if you were like lost at sea, you don't have water, you're gonna you're gonna go freaking go crazy. Okay. So they call stop, but then the moonlight streams in through the nearly punched hole in the wall. Boy loses control, and his sister Cora. Tells them to get out, and then they go and attack them. It was like, it was like, oh my goodness! And they almost, they're literally about to kill Derek and Scott in there. Then we have Allison. She was told to hide in the the, the, the storage closet and leave when the fighting starts. She goes and goes straight to the fighting. See Scott and Derek fighting these two um, other wolves. They can't leave because um, the um, the perimeter the perimeter surrounded by wolf things. We all know how that works. Uh, no, it's Mountain Ash Potter. My bad. It's by Miss Morell, and uh, so uh, she goes to try to remove it, and Derek says, "Don't do it." Then she sees Sky being all harmed, so she goes and breaks it off. I'm like, "You stupid broad!" Oh my goodness. So, Bored and Cora go out now that, you know, the thing is broken. Derek's like, what did you do? And she's like, I was just trying to help you. And he's like, you, they have not, and pretty much, you just set free two very dangerous wolves right now. They haven't been without sunlight, I mean, not sunlight, moonlight for a very long time, and you just set them free. They could pretty much kill somebody being this aggressive, you stupid boy. And she said, I saved your life. Now, um. Uh, and she says, I'm not the one that's up in here turning um, teenagers into killers. And he says, that yeah, it might not me be you, but the rest of your family. Uh, mm. And she says, it's, it's, that's not my mis She made her mistakes, but Ger Gerard is not her first. Ger Gerard, that's her, um, her grandpa, is not her fault. And she and he goes, what about your mama? And she's like, what? And they look at Scott. And like, Scott, it's just Gerard, like, Scott, you need to tell her. And she's like, Scott? You know, kind of the answer. And then we add Lydia House. She's sleeping. Now all of a sudden she wakes up screaming. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was watching this with my mom. She's like, oh my god, there's something always wrong with this girl. But anyway, Chaos Rhythm, pretty good episode. Had a lot of um, intense moments. I did not know the video was going to be 18 minutes long. Anyway, that's Chaos Rising. Um, I will see you guys um, next Monday for episode 3. Because this season is looking really really awesome and we'll see you guys also monday for true blood because true blood anyway bye see you guys later